In this episode, we're bikepacking on the San Francisco Peninsula. Here's a look at what's coming up. Bikepacking is a super emotional experience. The highs are super high and the lows are super low. We've got a lot of elevation to make. I don't think I've ever cried on a ride before, but I'm so spent. Poison oak everywhere. This ain't bad. These cool fungi. Look at the size of that mushroom. California poppies. I love being in the forest, especially the redwoods. There's the Ritz Carlton. This is our Ritz Carlton. <laughs> the final stretch. So I'm here with Steve, and this is our friend Kyle. We are getting ready to do a 112 mile route through the South Bay area. Let's start making some tracks. We're gonna get to see the ocean, we're gonna get to see some oak groves, some redwoods. It's gonna be beautiful. It's also gonna be really demanding. We've got some long mile days and a lot of climbing, but I'm really excited for this trip. This route is a little bit different than most of the routes we look at for bikepacking in that we're passing through a lot of cities. There are a lot of restaurants along the way and shops and pavement, so we're never really that far away from civilization, which has its pros and cons. But when you bikepack, you gotta kind of make the most of whatever route you can find where you want to go. I want to give some credit to Valas Valencius for mapping this route. Thank you, Valas. So unlike just hopping on Trail Forks or MTV Project, you're not gonna just have a map neatly curated for you with every turn by turn that you need. We have pioneers like Valas who go out, put a map together how they think it would work, write it, add notes, and then make changes as needed. And even if you follow their route, you're still gonna have to do a lot of research. I'm not coming into this trip in quite as good of shape as I was when we did our first bikepacking trip. So it's going to be interesting, it's going to be really challenging, but I'm in it. I'm just going to try and stay alive. Goodbye Bay, hello Pacific Ocean. We're varying from the route just a little bit because we hear it's really steep the other way. So tempting to launch off of these, but I'm riding a bike packing bike loaded up, not my BMX bike. Man. All right, we're going to go closer to the beach. I say we ride on the beach a little bit. Let's go ride some road and try not to die. There's got to be like 200 surfers out here. Woo I just got soaked. crossing at the ocean. Okay, that was fun. So many pretty flowers this time of year. This is awesome. What a day. So happy right now. Ah, that eucalyptus. The smell brings back many memories of childhood. Hey! Oh, <laughs> Good to meet you in person finally. How's it going? How are you doing? Good. That's funny. He was saying on the way down here, he's like, oh, they're around here somewhere. That's too funny. That was Robert from the B1 Biker Channel. What are the odds that A, he would be in the exact same place as us today, and B, that it would be the exact same moment? That's too funny. Yeah, look how washed out that is. Coastal California, the land of mudslides. Climbing up into the foothills. I'm so grateful for people who post and share their routes because I would never find this on my own. Thank you very much. Sorry for the clanging pot. I'm gonna take it real easy because 
I got no range on this seat post. I can't put it down at all. That's cool. Oop. I just lowered my dropper without thinking. Put my bag into my tire. All right. Full seat post up mode. I'll tell you. I did not handle the same when it's loaded with bags. Got some roots here. Gotta use front brake on this stuff. Look at the size of that mushroom. That's so cool looking. Stopping for a snack break real quick. We're at Rancho Corral de Tierra. We are probably 40% done for the day is my guess. All right, we better get on the move again. California poppies. All right, hold that speed. I'm gonna turn on your light. Left here. Like we got us a bit of single track. So this is a less than glamorous side of storytelling on your mountain bike. The battery swapping and the SD card changing and the charging of batteries. And... How many batteries do you have in there? That'd be even yeah. bigger if we had the gimbals. It would definitely be getting in the way of what we're trying to do. We are trying to keep <laughs> gimbals going too. On our way to the Spine Trail, we have to pass through some stables and we'll walk our bikes. People on bikes kind of freak horses out sometimes and horses always have the right of way. So anytime you see horses on a trail, you should get off your bike, talk to the owner and don't ride unless the owner tells you it's good to ride. So we're gonna respect the people that have stables here and the horses that live here. It feels like we're wandering into someone's backyard, but. One of the ranchers here said, that's where everybody goes. Just go follow the trail around the, the stable. Wow, what beautiful eyes you have. Look at those beautiful blue eyes. Look at the goats. They told Scott goat tees. Goat tees. Yeah, you guys are cute. All right, this looks a little more like a trail. There's an air show in Half Moon Bay tomorrow. So they've got P-51 Mustangs flying around. I don't remember which, one of the bombers is going to be flying around giving people tours. And that's the airport down there where they're all going to be taken off from. We're going to climb up to those hills, ride the ridge across, and then ride across that one and down into town for dinner. Please don't let any of these things that are touching me be poisoned oak. Some mint, some berries, mustard flowers, itchy grass. Man, I don't know how Steve does this. Climb after climb. I need to stop, take a breath. That means standing in poison oak. I have a heart attack here. Tell Tess I love her and she can have my bikes. We're about a third of the way around the poison oak forest loop, I'm gonna <laughs> call it. My legs are all scratched up from the weeds and the berries, and all I hope is that the poison oak oil doesn't get into my cuts. Holy crap, that is so steep. This is bonkers. I've ridden everything up to this point. There's no way I'm riding that. Even on a motorcycle, that'd be extremely difficult. My arms better look real sexy after this, that's all I can say. Oh, for the love of Pete. It looks just like what we came up. All right. Absurdly steep climb. Today was supposed to be the easy day. This is steep stuff. I would totally cut the poison oak forest loop out. I think this is probably the fifth one of these. 
all the way that way. Well, at least these irises are beautiful. How would you sum up the last hour? With great optimism, I would say it is one of the most beautiful and challenging trails I've experienced. Well said. Riding my bike, yay! Wow, beautiful view. We get to go down a little. We just covered more ground in the last two minutes than we did in the last hour and a half. That feels good. This ain't bad. Forgot to put a bell on my new bike. Ding, ding! Whoa, I do not really like to jump with the bed roll on the front. There's a sweet slalom course with berms and gap jumps over there. That would be so much fun if we weren't on 45 pound bikes with droppers stuck up. Back to civilization. Being in the tall grass makes me feel like a kid again. Ooh, someone's cooking dinner. It smells good. For today's sidewalk session, we're gonna go downstairs. Oh wait, we've already done that one. I didn't expect to see such a normal, suburban-looking neighborhood in Half Moon. I thought it'd be all mansions and beach houses. Kind of cool. We are at Harbor Village, which is a little strip mall. This is our auto lock. We love this thing. This is how we lock up our bikes for really quick trips into restaurants. Use a little combo, shove it in there like a big zip tie, push the button and it comes out. We are eating dinner at Cafe Mezzaluna. Kyle ordered a margarita pizza, which is really just a cheese pizza. <laughs> There's no basil on it. Interesting from an Italian restaurant. You had restaurant. one job. <laughs> <laughs> How you feeling? All right, I'm having some soup, some salad, some quiche. Recharging my metaphorical batteries. Yeah. We'll recharge the camera batteries later tonight. Kyle, how you feeling? A little better. Caffeine's kicking in from this coffee and my cheese pizza is <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> We've got about two or three more miles to get into camp, so we're gonna set up camp. And we think that a lot of us have poison oak stuff Everywhere. On, on our clothes, possibly on our skin. We're gonna see if we could squeeze in going to the laundromat and washing our riding clothes tonight after we set up camp. Ah, oh, what a beautiful day. On your left. One more. Look at all the rock animals, that's cool. That is so neat. We made it to the campground. Yay. They have showers. Excellent. Paid our seven bucks ahead for our campsite and now we're here to set up camp. See if we can get cleaned up in time to do some laundry tonight. Steve is the man for whisking himself off to the laundromat to get our potentially poison oak covered clothes clean so we can have clean riding clothes tomorrow. Best part of the day for me was probably the silliest moment. Just being on the beach, trying to do that freshwater crossing <laughs> and I dropped both feet in the water. So, so I had wet feet all day long, but uh, that, was, that was the best part of the day for me. Best part of the day was probably our first glimpse of the ocean this morning and riding down to the beach. That was just a great way to start out the trip best part of the day I don't usually ride around town and it was actually really fun seeing the town from the bike and when you're on a bike you smell things and you hear things and you see things you don't see from a car best part of the day for me was was pulling into town riding on the beach and just kind of hanging out on the bikes got some good sleep last night listening to the ocean trying to be quiet because there's other campers here but check out my shelter the guy lines have slackened a little bit overnight, but I'm still pretty proud of myself. Anyway, we're gonna get changed, get packed up, get back on bikes. Getting ready for today's ride, topping off the water. No idea how this is gonna taste. It might be a tailwind nutrition additive day. 
It's 8 a.m. day two. This is a monster of a day. It sounds like it's about 50 miles and 10,000 feet of climbing to our camp tonight. We've got a backup camp that's 10, 8 to 10 miles closer uh, that we might bail out to if we can't make the 50 miles. I haven't ridden 50 miles on a bike since I was 15 as a Boy Scout, and it was all pavement, and that was the hardest day of my life. Let's see if we can make this day easier than that. I have a feeling this is going to be the hardest day of my life. <laughs> Let's get riding though. I will say I could have done a better job of packing lighter weight food. I know the principles, but I was pretty lazy this time. My food is so heavy. Bikepacking in California is very different than Nevada, Arizona, Idaho. There's not so much BLM land here fewer public lands where you can just like stop if you're tired so you have to make your miles to get from camp to camp so while we do want to just take our time and soak this all in we have to push on and make our miles today there's a Ritz Carlton beautiful so if you got the budget, you don't need to camp, you can ride to there. On your left. Thank you. Little climb. Whew. Smells like tea. I'm sure there's leaves in here I recognize. It's so crazy, there are so many snails out here on the gravel. It's like a slalom game of dodge the snails. That must be so hard to cross gravel when you're a snail. Goodbye beach, we're going to the redwoods. Back on the road, starting to rain a little. We'll be off the highway pretty soon and then we'll be heading up toward the single track, towards Skeggs. Purissima Creek Road. Slow and steady. Well, since I'm the weak link, Steve said he's gonna carry some of my water. Which I hate to do, but when you're the one holding everyone back, you don't have a lot of options. Well, it is kind of a bummer. I've got a real independent streak. And as much as I'd love to carry all my food and water and equipment on my back for the entire trip, I am with a group and it's not fair to the group for me to let my pride put everyone in a bad position. Thanks, Steve. I know you're trying to help us. Tess is cruising now. I think we get to go on dirt now. This is so cool. It only took us like half hour to get from the beach to the redwoods. The redwoods are magical. This is amazing. We've got a lot of elevation to make, but it is super pretty and I love being in the forest, especially the redwoods. I'm dodging banana slugs left and right. Oops, salamander. Whew, just missed him. Check out this salamander. Hopefully he doesn't run away. You see him? He's so camouflage. You lose points if you hit a slug. Almost hit that one there. They're quick. That one's the size of my hand. This is a steep climb. Very steep. So when a climb is going to be long enough that I'm going to have to stop to take breaks. Sometimes it's good for me to just walk for a stretch because at least I'm still moving rather than riding a few yards and taking a break, riding a few yards and taking a break. Yay! I'm pedaling. Steve is such a boss riding all of this. Nice. See where we 
go now. That was a beautiful system. We're off to El Corte de Madera to ride some of the single track in there now. Excited. Hello, morning. What a day, huh? We're going Los Gatos. Pacifica. This is a popular biking road. That makes me feel better being on it. That house is like a big tree house. Sweet. We've got a little downhill here, and we're gonna be at Skeggs. Feels so good to give my bum a rest for a minute. All right, now we're on the North Leaf Trail, headed to Skeg's trail system. Mountain lion habitat. They live alone and hunt between dusk and dawn. Good, we're good. Adult lions are generally wary of people and try to avoid contact. In the rare case of an encounter with a mountain lion, use caution. We will, I promise. You gotta stay on the trails. If you encounter a mountain lion, face the lion, back away slowly, be large, shout. If attacked, fight back. 15 mile an hour speed limit. All right, we will keep it under that. Oh, this is cool in here. Yeah. Everything's a little bit harder loaded up. You feel like what it feels like to be a totally new rider again. <laughs> the instinct to use the dropper never goes away. <laughs> nice job, Tessa's first time riding the Orbea hardtail on a trail, so she's doing great. a snack break we would have liked to have been at the cafe by now and having lunch there but we're still about five or six miles out so we're gonna eat some snacks and still plan on eating a meal there when we get there everyone's in good spirits it is gorgeous in here it's amazing it's not easy navigating through here Steve has done a great job though today we're gonna try mandarin orange this one does not have added caffeine which is fine because I don't need caffeine right now we like our Tailwind stuff. We're not sponsored by them. We do like them though. I might as well start hiking now. Look at these cool fungi. Looks like something from the ocean. Lots and lots of them. Love my silent hub. Listen to that. Timberview Trail. Of course, when there's a junction, it seems like we always go up because we started at the ocean. We end in the mountains. The orange tailwind nutrition is awesome. It's my favorite. That's probably what I'll be ordering next is a big case of that. Just pedaling it out. It's a tight switch back on a loaded bike. Getting tired. Still walking some of the hills. Made it to Skyline Drive. This is actually the scariest part of the whole trip for me. Look at the bike lane. There isn't one. And sports cars fly on here. Super dangerous road. 
That was cool. We were just talking with the ranger and he had a lot of questions because he wants to get into bike packing too and it's cool for him to check out the gear we got. All right, keep your fingers crossed for us that none of us get hit by a car. Let's go find that restaurant. Lunch or dinner. Bless you, Alice, and your restaurant. This is the happening place to bring your sports car or motorcycle. Some cool cars here. Mmm, black bean burger. It's gonna feel good to get a solid meal in today. I've just kind of been snacking all day. We are running short on time. We camped up here. We are here, and that's bailout camp one, but we'd really like to make it to Castle Rock tonight. So we're going to keep riding on the sketchy road and cut out eight miles of insane climb to make this flow a little better so we can make the mileage we need to make. Sweet. That was nice. Get a meal in my belly. We shall try to be so careful. Looks like the route takes you down there, up there, and then back to Skyline. We're gonna skip that in the order of time, and we are just beat. It's been really exhausting today. Really tough day, lots of mileage, lots of elevation. All the way out there at the horizon, you can see the ocean. Big basin's down there. We're not gonna make it quite that far, but just to give you a little point of reference where we are. It's a great time of year. The hills are really green still. Pretty cool day. We started at the ocean. We rode through the redwoods. Now we're kind of in the open grass areas with a little bit of forest. Man, what a day. Big and deep. We're on the Bay Ridge Trail and it is beautiful. So we're bailing on the dirt and we're just going to try and ride pavement straight into Castle Rock campground. Try to make it before dark or as close to there as we can. I'm bonking harder than I ever have. I don't think I've ever cried on a ride before, <laughs> but I'm, I'm so spent. And um, it's getting dark, so I'm going to try not to die and just ride in the camp. You got this. You've done awesome today. Bike packing is a super emotional experience. The highs are super high and the lows are super low. And as much as you'd like it to just be mind over matter sometimes, our bodies have physical limitations and weekend warrior riders like us reach them on bike packing trips. So it's always a balance. Some of these guys that make these routes have legs of steel and are super endurance athletes. We are not. We don't want to be on the road at night because it's dangerous with all those cars. And there's no bike lane on that road. So we're hopping on the single track which parallels the road. Probably means a little bit more distance and maybe a little more climbing, but we're okay with that because we're safe here long as we're together. Kyle stayed on the road and he's gonna push on to camp tonight. We're gonna take a rest from riding, walk a little bit. We'll coast the downhills, that makes sense. That's what's great about bikes, they've got wheels and they can roll and get momentum. Beautiful smooth single track in here for those looking for it up above Castle Rock, Saratoga Gap. Whew. This was a tough day. Get away, cougars. You don't want us, we don't taste like chicken. We taste like broccoli. We're so close to the road, it's just right up there. 
I'm not super worried about cougars because there's loud sports cars driving by all night long. Fog's rolling in, it's gonna be a chilly night. Got the headlamp out, just trying to make our miles as safely and quickly as possible. Coming through. We're back on the road. I was too scared of mountain lions, so we're on the road. We are 20 minutes away, two miles from the turnoff to the campground. We are working our way down the fire road into the bike packers or biking, hiking, walking camp for Castle Rock State Park. It's kind of tricky though, you don't enter at the normal state park entrance, you enter down a service road. So I'm hoping that Kyle made it. We sent Kyle on ahead, we were lagging and we wanted to let him get to camp before us, so hopefully he's there. Kyle left his water bottle so we'd know it was him. Hopefully. hopefully. We know he's down here, or was at one point. That's a good sign. All right, where's Kyle? Kyle's gonna be asleep when we get there. I'm thinking that's Kyle. I see a bike with orange on the handlebars. Hey, that sounds like Kyle's voice. I got your water bottle. How oh, did I drop it? Yeah, but that's how we knew you were down here for sure. We found a sleeping shelter. Oh my goodness. There's a fireplace and there's a bundle of wood there already. We are so having a fire in here. Yay, we made it to camp. I can't believe we're actually here today. We are gonna get it toasty warm in here and eat all the food that we can. This is our Ritz Carlton. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what would MacGyver do? He would do this. Gotta get our little fire starter going. Hey, there's some nice sandals if anybody needs some sandals. There's no rat poop in here either. This is fantastic. Let's see, what time is it? I'm guessing 9.15. 9.30. It's Top Ramen and Bacon tonight. What are you having? Stroganoff. Good choice. Whew. Best part of the day, this fire right here. Look at that roaring fire. Best part of today was the look of that sweet, sweet headlamp coming down that trail when you guys got here. I had images of being here alone and worrying about you guys, and I'm glad you made it. So. Best part of my day is when we saw the water bottle on the ground and we knew Kyle had been down that road. And uh, we connected and saw him, and that was such a happy time. Second best part, finding this awesome shelter, this fire is so good to lift the spirits. Big thanks to Steve and to Kyle for picking up the slack for me today and I really appreciate having Steve here to help tell the story because I was not in a good place and it was really hard for me to keep filming um, but I'm glad that Steve was able to still capture the story so we'll be able to put something together to share with you guys. And I'm glad that Tess kept pushing on even when she was crying and at her limit and her wall she just kept digging deeper and found a way to keep on pedaling. It's hard because I'm used to being able to really just like push through some pretty, some pretty hard stuff, but it was tough. Good morning. We slept like rocks last night. Heating up some water for some oatmeal. I'm just getting all the cameras, batteries, SD cards kind of sorted for the day. Yesterday was a super hard day. Today there's still a good chunk to do, I'm guessing probably 30 miles. How you feeling today, Kyle? Feeling good, feeling good, channeling my inner Barry White. Um, <laughs> just gonna keep my head down and just paddle today. When he says feeling good, he really means his lung infection has come back. <laughs> but he's gonna muscle through it. Whew, just doing a little bit of stretching before we hit the trail. Because we are mighty stiff after, what, 80 miles in the last two days? Kyle's alive. He's smiling. Yeah, buddy. For now. We got this. We got this. I've been wearing Jewel Bow Adaptive Shades for a couple of years, and I've loved them. 
and I've actually recently partnered with Jewel Bow and they sent me these new Aero Speed Light glasses and they're awesome. They're just like a big windshield and I love adaptive shades. It's so nice because when you ride your bike, you're in the trees, you're out of the trees. You know, it's getting lighter, it's darker, the clouds are rolling in and it's always perfect and I, I love it. I really do forget that I'm wearing them as the sun goes down because they go pretty much clear. These have been awesome. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, it's pretty good. I'm not chafing, but the fleshy part of my bomb is tender. You know what hurts? It's right here. You're the one who climbed like everything though yesterday. That makes sense. Climbing our way out from camp. Crossing Skyline Drive here, and now we're getting back on the dirt single track. We're gonna have a lot of dirt today, which I'm excited for. Can you hear my first aid kit rattling around? Really loud today for some reason. There's a 15 mile an hour speed limit here. You'll get a ticket if you ride your bike faster than 15 miles an hour. You've heard of rangers with radar guns hiding in the bushes issuing tickets. I thought that was only Marin County, but apparently it's here as well. These trees are so cool. My goal is to outfit my bike and my bags and everything so I can fully use my dropper, so I can ride this 90 to 95% like I want to on the downs. I still got a ways to go. When I hit big bumps, my seat bag dips and hits the tire, which is kind of tearing the bag up. It's because I have such short legs, I can't raise that seat too much. And the plus tires are kind of tall. I'm, I'm gonna experiment with that, but right now this bike is handling so much better than my last bike packing set up on my Bronson. Much prefer the hardtail. This is so cool. And uh, I much prefer not having stuff mounted on the forks. That makes a huge difference. Lucky Kyle. He was able to not run a seat bag. So he, uh, he can still use his dropper. How about that? Woo. Loving this downhill flow. Woo! Spirits are high. Yeah, it's nice. It feels good to stand up and just do some gradual downhill, I'm not fearing for my leg with all this gear. Awesome. Your Bay Alafi is doing well for me on this trip. Like most bikes, it's more fun when it doesn't have packs on. But it's doing well and it's it's nice being on a hardtail. It'd be easy to get cooking too fast through here, especially if you rounded a corner and saw a hiker. I totally get the 15 mile an hour speed limit. Wider than some of yesterday's hairpin turns. So fun, I can almost forget for a moment that riding a bike packing bike. This is a really fun downhill um, bike packing because it's not very bumpy. All that climbing we did, we've been descending for about 15, 20 minutes now. And it's fun descending. It's not so steep that you're on the brakes the whole time. This is a great place to filter water. And you should always filter, even if it looks clean like that. So let me show you how I filter. I fill up my bottle with moving water. It's always better than stagnant water. This is rechargeable. I put this in, it blinks green, and I stir it for a minute. And it's got a UV light in there. 
and the UV light is killing anything that would hurt me. It's cool, there's no buttons on this or anything. You just stick it in the water and it senses that it's in water and turns itself on. When it goes between green and red, it's done. Kyle's turn. We got sun shining. I'm wearing my sweatpants. Life is good. <laughs> ding, ding. Ah, oh, that was heaps of fun. For anyone who is wondering what bags we are using, we are using Oveja Negra bags. I love this lunch box that goes over your roll and it does have this little front loader to cinch a dry bag to. We got a couple of top two bags and then this is my seat bag. And they do awesome for staying where they're told. I love it. So I'm gonna let Kyle show you his setup. He spent less than 50 bucks on all his stuff. True story. Granted, he's a backpacker, so he already had a lot of this stuff, but for retrofitting backpacking to bike packing, tell us what you've done. I found this frame bag on Amazon. It's this Moose Treks company. Don't know anything about them, can't really vouch for them. Um, but it was 35 bucks, so I checked the dimensions and it looked like it was gonna fit my frame perfect, and it's amazing it does. That's a size small, so those run yeah, this, huge. They run very big. This is a small, so and I have a big triangle. And then right here, this is just my little goodie box. It's actually a, a Topeak tri bag. And then I just got some salsa straps to hold my tent. I got creative and rolled a few extra things in there with it, along with my 32 liter pack. It's a little big to be carrying, but it was worth it just to just to get out here on my first uh, bike packing trip. So. Yeah, it's good to see if you like this or not. A lot of people dump a ton of money on stuff, go on one, and they're like, that is not for me. And then they got all this stuff. Eventually making our way to Lexington Reservoir above Los Gatos. All right, we are on the road, which means we make quick miles, but it's dangerous with the cars. But thankfully it's not Skyline. We're gonna be on this for like five to 10 miles. And it's all downhill. It's real easy to cook your brakes at these high speeds with a heavy bike. And you can't be a brake dragger. You just gotta brake hard and then let off and let them cool down. Just like when you're driving with the trailer. But if you're not thinking about it, you could just drag your brakes down this whole thing and totally cook them brakes off a bit. All right, we've made it to Highway 17, the Lexington Reservoir. Thankfully, there's a little trail here. I never would have known if it weren't for our awesome route finder guy. Let's go find a lunch spot. Oh, that's so pretty with all the lupins. Wow. Let's do lunch. We made a lunch spot on time. Woo! We had lunch at like four o'clock yesterday, <laughs> three o'clock. I'm gonna have a couple different wraps. I'm gonna have one that's got nut butter and some gorp. And then I'm gonna have another one that has a cheese stick in it. And then I've just got some other snack things. I really like these dried persimmons and they have these at Trader Joe's. I've been trying some new chamois butter this trip and having a lot of success with it. Yes, my bum itself is tender, but I don't have any chaffage, which I'm really happy about. This one is made by Squirt. They make that really awesome chain lube and they also make some barrier balm and it's doing an awesome job. So they make chamois butter and they also make chain lube. They basically keep all the things you don't want rubbing together from rubbing together. We have 17 miles to go and this is our last water opportunity for the day. So we're gonna have to come down here and filter. Yay, restrooms. We're spoiled. We haven't had to dig a cat hole at all this whole trip. Maybe I should take my Instagram picture here for the day. That'd be beautiful. Gotta 
get down there to filter some water. Kyle's got the right idea going on over there. Kyle let me borrow his filter. These are such nice filters, but they're heavy and bulky, so I usually use the Sawyer Mini or the Squeeze or my SteriPen. But these are really nice as long as you don't drop them and crack the ceramic filter inside. All topped off with fresh water. Awesome. Carrying a lot of water, that is heavy. Kyle has been such a great companion. We're so glad he's been able to join us. Yeah, it's it's so helpful. Like with just two of us, you know, we Steve and I do really well together, but when you have another friend, it really helps on those hard days uh, just to keep spirits up when when you've got another friend in the mix. It's good. Time to start making some tracks again. Didn't they hear that 800 millimeter handlebars were all the rage now? Ugh, hard to get through there. And these are only 760s. And we time. Want to give a shout out to my mom and dad, especially my dad, for instilling in me a love for the outdoors and taking me hiking and backpacking and camping when it wasn't convenient for him. Completely shaped my life for the better. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Mom. And cheers to all the parents out there who are sacrificing an epic ride with everyone to build character and relationships and preparedness in their children and a love for the outdoors. Doing some hike a bike, but still moving. This is called miner's lettuce. Because the miners used to eat it, it's edible. Tastes a little bit like spinach. Ooh, we still got a lot of climbing. Long ways to go. See how flat that is? He should be riding. It's so flat looking on the camera. Whee! I'm on my bike! This climb has been brutal, but it's been in the shade and it's been beautiful. Now I'm missing the shade. These trails were not meant for bikes. They're just fire roads that bikes are allowed on. It's brutal. I'll just go straight up the hill. Try not to overheat or overexert my muscles. I can only go about 40 feet at a time. I'm gonna have to stop for 30 seconds, catch my breath, get my heart rate back down. Do another 40 feet. Woo! We're enjoying the shade when we find it, but just trying to keep her going as much as possible. We'll take breaks when we need it, but keep them brief and just keep on moving. The shade is great and the breeze, there's a breeze up here, which is really nice, but we gotta make sure we don't overheat and salt out and we drink enough water. Let's have a look and just see how high we've come. We're all the way in the bottom of that valley. Oh dear, oh my God. that is a climb. They need some switchbacks going up that. That's insane. Even hiking, that's really tough. <laughs> oh my gosh. Then we come around the corner and see this. I'm gonna get a running start. Test coasted halfway up. I should be able to coast halfway up, then maybe I can ride the rest. Here we go. Do it, baby. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This whole trip, 90% of the ups, are like 35, 40 degrees. <laughs> They are steep ups and they're long. It's not just a short 10 or 15 foot section. Why do we do this again? Because we're not at work. Oh, good call. See, he's totally an optimist. Keep in mind, we'll do a 30 to 35 mile day on our enduro bikes with lots of climbing. But you put three 40 mile days back to back with a 50 pound bike 
with with a ton of elevation. So we had 21,000 feet of elevation across these three days. And uh, yeah, that tires us out. I want to eat a whole watermelon. That sounds so good. These little sprigs of mint are keeping me going. Whenever I get down, I lean forward, smell my mint, and I'm ready to go. But we're progressing, but my tendons are getting inflamed. My Achilles tendon is what's hurting the most. You can see San Jose down there. We got a, about five miles of downhill now with the occasional little hill, but yeah. This is probably a 12 to 15 percent grade, even though it doesn't look like it. You need your good cornering technique there. Someone's brakes are cooking. I can smell them. <laughs> it's hard because you don't want to drag them down that, but if you let off, you get cruising. Deep, yeah, in like. And it's loose. Television. Bay leaves. That's why it smells like Italian food here. Shoot, I just realized the gates where the van is locked close at sundown. We gotta get to the van before sundown or it'll be locked in there overnight. And I can't have that. I gotta get to work tomorrow. We gotta get Kyle home. We're at mile 108, which means we've got about four more miles to do before the sun goes down and our van gets locked inside the gates. <laughs> it's mostly downhill and we'll be on a road, so we'll be good. I'm ready for a party to drop this dropper. So I'm gonna fit this in my backpack. It'll be a heavy backpack, but I'll be able to get that dropper low for the last single track. Steve's a genius. I don't have room to do that in my pack. <laughs> You're definitely gonna have more fun going down than I am. I keep buzzing. I hit a bump and it G's out and buzzes on the tire and I don't want to wreck this bag. I like this bag. Sorry to burst your bubble, kids, but there is no poop fairy. I love that. Enjoy. Woo! -hoo! Home stretch. Yeah. Oh, it's so fun to be able to manual and lift that front end up, even though it's super loaded down. Woo Those lucky guys with their seats down. What an adventure. Final stretch, the last quarter mile. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, if it wasn't the last 100 yards. Still have another gear. Yeah, you still have another granny. There you go. Oh, there's Fred the van. We finished strong, 112 miles, baby. 21, 21,000 feet of elevation. Babe, you killed it. 
It just about killed me. Good job. I have mixed feelings about this trip because there's part of me that thinks that I I should have been humble enough to let Steve and Kyle go without me. But at the same time, I'm like, well, I did it. She did it. She did it. And the FOMO would have been strong. And she felt where her wall is. She encountered it on this trip. She also broke Not where wall. it used to be. <laughs> yeah, the wall has moved and she killed it. Kyle, you killed it, man. Phew. Oh, nice tan line. And it's going to wash off as soon as I take a shower. <laughs> I am so glad we did that. That was super fun. I will never do that route again. That route is for the guys who race the Tour Divide, not for weekend warriors like us. But I think having seen what we've seen, we could probably put together a better route that's more feasible for the, you know, just fit weekend warriors like us. That being said, we are super appreciative for creative people like the guy who put this together. It's real easy to critique and criticize someone who makes something and pick it apart. We didn't have to make that from scratch. If I'd had to build this route from scratch and do all the research, it would have been a hundred times worse than this. <laughs> and this, I really appreciate him and we can all stand on his shoulders and make this route even better and more doable. It was a wild ride and we're gonna go eat now. One thing I will say, if the steepest portions were two to 5% less steep, it would have completely changed the trip. But when you're mapping these routes out, you kind of are stuck with the trails that exist. And a lot of the trails here in the Bay Area go straight up. Best part of the trip for me was being in that shelter, finding the firewood there, and just totally rekindling our spirits as well. I'd have to agree. Best part of the trip was when we all reconnected. My big takeaway is Tess is a boss. She's hardcore, man. Her husband's not half bad either. Yesterday was the best and the worst part of the trip for me. Getting into camp was the hardest thing that I've ever done, like physically. But getting into camp, having the fire, finding that shelter, finding each other again, best part of the trip.